Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 5.1 volumes of revolution around the x-axis. 5.1 represents chapter 5, section 1 of the Core Pure 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. Consider the curve y equal f of x. We have an area over here bounded by y equal f of x, the line x equal a, the line x equal b, and the positive x-axis. Step number 1. Revolve y equal f of x by 360 degrees, which is equivalent to 2 pi radians, around the x-axis between x equal a and x equal b. So I want you to imagine the curve y equal f of x spinning around the x-axis 360 degrees. This leads on to step number 2. It will create the following volume of revolution. Step number 3. Consider a slice of the volume of revolution. So we have a slice over here annotated in purple. This is a cylinder with center A, radius Y, and height of delta X. So I've redrawn that cylinder over here. So we have a center A, radius Y, and a height of delta X. Okay, so now we can move on to step number four. So the volume of a cylinder, in other words, this very small cylinder represented by delta V, is given by the formula for the volume of a cylinder. And that is precisely pi R squared multiplied by the height. Now the radius is y and the height is delta x. So we have that the volume of the cylinder delta v is given by pi y squared and delta x. Moving on to step number 5. The estimate for the volume of revolution v created by rotating y equal f of x by 360 degrees, which is equivalent to 2 pi radians, around the x-axis between x equal a and x equal b is given by v is approximately equal to. So we find the volume of this very small cylinder and then we work out the volume of each very small cylinder between x equal a to x equal b and then we add it together. So to formalize this we have the summation from x equal a to x equal b of delta v. Very small cylinders. Now we know that the volume of each very small cylinder is given by pi y squared delta x. So this summation can be written as the sum from x equal a to x equal b of pi y squared delta x. Moving on to step number 6. When delta x tends to 0, we are assuming that the height of each cylinder becomes infinitely small. Okay, infinitely small. So we can replace the delta x with dx. Also, when delta x tends to 0, delta v is equal to pi y squared delta x will now tend to. The delta v becomes dv and the delta x becomes dx. So we have dv equal pi y squared dx. Step number seven. Because we are dealing with infinitely small heights and not very small heights, okay, we can replace the summation symbol with an integral symbol. And so now we have the exact volume v. Okay, so hence the exact volume v of the revolution is given by the integral from a to b of dv, but the dv is represented by pi y squared dx. Now pi is a constant, we can take it outside of the integral, this is one of the rules for integration. So if we take it out, we've got pi integral from a to b y squared dx, so that there is the exact volume v. That's how we work out a volume of revolution around the x-axis, yeah? with a rotation of 360 degrees, which is equivalent to 2 pi radians. Now, alternatively, we can rewrite this as v equal pi integral from a to b. Instead of y squared, we can put f of x in bracket squared dx. These are the key facts of 5.1 volumes of revolution around the x-axis. I'll be implementing these key facts within two exam style questions. Here is the first exam style question. The curve with the equation y equals square root 3x to the power 4 minus 3 all over x cubed is shown in the diagram. The region R is rotated through 2 pi radians about the x-axis. Find the volume of the solid generated, giving your answer to three significant figures. Now usually in the examination you would give your volume in exact form, but in this case we have to round our volume to three significant figures. Let's have a look at the solution. I'm going to begin by working out this x-intercept. So at an x-intercept, we know that y is equal to 0. So this implies that square root 3x to the power 4 minus 3 all over x cubed has to equal 0. Now we can take the x cubed to the right-hand side. So this in turn implies that square root 
3x to the power 4 minus 3 is equal to 0. To remove the square root, I need to square both sides. Okay, so I've got 3x to the power 4 minus 3 is equal to 0 squared, which is just 0. This implies that 3x to the power 4 is equal to 3. And so we have x to the power 4 is equal to 1. Now I need to take the plus or minus fourth root of 1. Okay, so I've got x equal plus or minus fourth root of 1. So x is equal to 1, x is equal to negative 1. But as you can see over here, x is more than 0. So since x is more than 0, we have to accept x equal 1. So I can go back to my diagram. I've got x equal 1. So I'm going to rotate the curve C between x equal 1 and x equal 6 around the x-axis 2 pi radians. So I've got my limits. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate y squared. Now y squared is basically square root 3x to the power 4 minus 3 all over x cubed squared, yeah? So we're going to square the top and bottom. If I square the top, it will remove the square root. So I've got 3x to the power 4 minus 3 over x cubed squared is x to the power 6. Now I'm going to split this into two fractions so that I get a polynomial that can be integrated. So if I split this, I get 3x to the power 4 over x to the power 6 minus 3 over x to the power 6. When we are dividing, we subtract the powers. So 4 take away 6 is minus 2. This gives me 3x to the power minus 2. Minus 3, bring the denominator up, x to the power minus 6. So the volume V is given by pi integral from my lower limit, which is 1, to the upper limit, which is 6. y squared dx. So equal to pi integral from 1 to 6. The y squared is this polynomial over here. 3x to the power minus 2 minus 3x to the power minus 6 dx. Okay, so I can continue over here. So my volume is given by pi, open square bracket, close square bracket. I'm going to integrate term by term. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So the first term integrates to minus 3x to the power minus 1. The second term integrates to plus 3 over 5 x to the power minus 5. Then we have the lower limit x equal 1 and the upper limit x equal 6. Okay, so I begin by substituting x equal 6 into here. So if I substitute x equal 6, I get minus 6, 4, 7, 9 over 1, 2, 9, 6, 0. Take away, substitute x equal 1. This gives me minus 12 over 5, close square bracket. And if I multiply pi by what I have inside and I round to three significant figures, I get 5.97 unit cubed, 3SF. This completes the first exam style question. Here is another exam style question. The curve shown in the diagram has equation y equal x square root 4 minus x squared. The finite region R is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis to generate a solid of revolution with volume 657 pi over 160, where a is more than 0 but less than 2. Show that 77 over 480 minus 4 over 3a cubed plus 1 over 5a to the power 5 is equal to 0. Let's have a look at the solution. First and foremost, I'm going to calculate y squared. So this is equal to, in bracket, x squared root 4 minus x squared whole squared. Okay, so we have to square each term, and therefore we get x squared multiplied by 4 minus x squared. The square root gets removed because square root is the inverse of squaring. So they cancel out. Now we can expand the brackets. This gives me 4x squared minus x to the power 4. So the volume V is given by pi multiplied by the integral from a to 2. So the lower limit is a and the upper limit is 2. y squared dx. So we have pi multiplied by the integral from a to 2. 
the y squared is this polynomial dx. Okay, so we can continue over here. So that volume is equal to pi, open square bracket. I can now integrate term by term. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So the first term integrates to 4 over 3, x to the power 3. Minus, the second term integrates to 1 over 5, x to the power 5. Close square bracket, lower limit a, upper limit 2. Okay, so now I need to replace the x's with 2, the upper limit. And so if I do this, I get 64 over 15. Take away, replace the x's with a now. So I've got 4 over 3, a to the power 3, minus 1 over 5, a to the power 5. Close square bracket. So I've got 64 over 15. Multiply these two terms by the negative 1. This gives me minus 4 over 3, a to the power 3, plus 1 over 5, a to the power 5. Okay, but we know from the question that the volume of the solid of revolution is 657 pi over 160. Okay, so we have to set this number equal to this over here. So I've got pi in bracket 64 over 15 minus 4 over 3, a to the power 3, plus 1 over 5, a to the power 5. Close bracket is equal to 657 pi over 160. So we can cancel out the pi's. Okay, so this leaves me with 64 over 15 minus 4 over 3, a to the power 3, plus 1 over 5, a to the power 5 is equal to 657 over 160. So we can take everything to the left hand side. And if I do this, I get precisely 77 over 480 minus 4 over 3, a to the power 3, plus 1 over 5, a to the power 5, equal to 0, as required. This completes the second exam style question and this teaching video 5.1 volumes of revolution around the x-axis. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.